Namaste to all the yoga sadhakas. Right nostril is considered as Surya Nadi. Left is considered as Chandra Nadi. This is exactly what yogic text says. And they also say that if you breathe from your right nostril, you'll be more exciting yourself. If you breathe from your left nostril, you'll calm down yourself. All these are mentioned. But are there any scientific research to validate all these things? Do we know for sure what exactly happens physiologically when we breathe from the left nostril or from the right nostril? To understand all this, today we have Dr. Meena Ramanathan with us today. She has done extensive study or research on this particular aspect of the pranayama itself, mainly comparing the left nostril and the right nostril breathing practices and how it influences on our physiology. Before I hand it over to Dr. Bina Ramanathan, let me just uh, take a moment to introduce her to all of you who don't know her. Yoga Tilakam Dr. Meena Ramanathan is an admin in charge of School of Yoga Therapy of Institute of Saltogenesis and Complementary Medicine at Sri Balaji Vidya Peet, Pondicherry. Recognized PhD guide, IAYT certified yoga therapist, joint secretary for Indian Yoga Association, state chapter Pondicherry, subject matter expert and task force member for, you, for the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, Traditional Knowledge Digital Library Project, Government of India. She is a general editor of Journal of Allied Yogic Science at Loyola Marymount, Marymount University, USA, a student of Rishi culture, Ashtanga Yoga Parampara. She strives to empower the lives of Devanga, so are basically uh, children with intellectual and physical disabilities, uh, and silver citizens and transgender population. So Dr. Meena has more than 78 research, scientific research papers, 26 abstracts, contributed to six chapters in books, 10 copyrights, and 10 compilations to her credit. She is a member of Board of Studies and external expert for various universities and recipient of many titles and awards, including the most recent one, such as Rejoice Ayush Excellence Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, Best Female Yogi Award, and Major Dhyan Chand Award for the Best Star Coach. So with this brief introduction, so I welcome Dr. Meena Ramanathan uh, to share this uh, Yoga Vijnana, the science of yoga with all of us today. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me. Good to have you. Thank you. Namaste. So good to be here. Uh, you know, amongst uh, all the yoga enthusiasts, thank you, Vinay, for calling me and, uh, you know, for this discussion. So let's share whatever we know so that yes. uh, it could be expanded a little more and maybe uh, more will get interested and uh, start doing something like this. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Let us demystify the concept of uh, uninostral breathing or the, uh, and the alternate nostril, not the alternate probably in this video. Uh, we'll go focus on the uninostral breathing. Before we go, right, uh, what exactly is this uh, uninostral breathing? Because for the audience who don't know about it, uh, can you just briefly explain uh, what is uninostral breathing? So, right, like you rightly put about when you were just introducing, uh, Swara Yoga, uh, you know, the ancient science of uh, which has systematized, it is kind of systematizing how the nostrils work the right nostril, the left nostril, and you so beautifully brought it out. Uh, the right swara, pingala swara, left swara, the ida swara, uh, the surya swara, the chandra swara, whatever uh, people want, uh, they are familiar with. Uh, all these, you know, like exactly mentions what are the two different energies that are running in our bodies, equal and opposite energies, the positive, the negative energies, and how can we manipulate them? How can we balance them so that the best of health and wellness could manifest in each individual? So the whole science of Swara is all about this, how to maintain, how to sustain, and how to attain that state of Samatva, how to attain that state of balance, equanimity. Mm -hmm. So that is the basis. So we have two nostrils, as we all know, the right mm -hmm. and the left. So uni nostril basically means breathing in and through exclusively through only one nostril. So the right uni nostril breathing means you close the left and breathe in and out only through the right. So that will be the Surya, Surya Nadi. 
and breathing in and out through exclusively the left nostril uh, would be means would mean that you are closing the right and breathing in and out only through the left and that would be the chandra nadi so surya nadi pranayama chandra nadi pranayama these would be the uni nostril breathing uh, practices that we have used in this study in this study what we have focused on is that the different permutation combinations that could be used using these two nostrils so one is the right nostril breathing the same starting from the right nostril you could breathe out through the left nostril making it an alternative nostril breathing so the one combination is surya nadi pranayama which is right in and right out and then surya vedana pranayama which is right in and left out same thing chandra nadi pranayama left in and left out and chandra vedana pranayama left in and right out so these are the basic four combinations the other two practices which we have used in this study is uh, the nadi shuddhi pranayama which is alternative but again it has two cycles in one round see for example in chandra vedana and surya vedana it is just left in and right out that okay. makes one round in surya vedana it is right in left out which makes it one round of the pranayama whereas okay. in nadi shuddhi it is left in right out right in left out which makes it one round so alternate nostrils of two aspects making it one round and that was also taken apart from that we also had uh, the normal breathing the basic normal breathing uh, just as a you know to uh, have a control kind mm -hmm. of um, mm -hmm. because we were using the nostrils so using both the nostrils what is happening so we have usually like all studies uh, on the right on the left everything has been done scientifically studied so what is so special about this study is that uh, we have found out the immediate effect immediate effect of these practices and compared the effects the differential effect of each one so that is where this stands out and along with that we have also found the reaction time the uh -huh. reaction time if you all you you just so that everybody knows what it is the uh -huh. reaction time is like the time gap the time period between the uh, the stimulus and the response the stimulus is like say for example uh, you know something pricks this is the stimulus and you withdraw your hand immediately so mm -hmm. that would be your response so the time is calculated when uh, the stimulus is given and the response is there this is usually it is an indicator of how agile how quick your brain responds the motor sensory response so you know it's like the how quick the brain can process uh -huh. so we had two different uh, reaction times measured the auditory the the signal for the sound and the visual for the light uh -huh. so i don't want to go into that for now uh, because this study basically compared the immediate effect of the six different pranayamas that we had taken uh -huh. and also the reaction time so uh -huh. the the methodology uh, if i can go with that vinay what do you think yeah methodology probably uh, it will be too detailed of uh, for no, the just, audience yeah uh, but a very high quickly, level quickly you can explain yeah yes very very simply to say how we go about you know like Uh, the patients were made to sit the patients the subjects the participants of the study were made to sit quiet for 5 minutes and then all the others were standardized and uh, you know like after 5 minutes of quiet sitting the bp and uh, you know the heart rate the blood pressure the systolic pressure and the diastolic pressure were measured using a non invasive uh, you know a digital uh, blood pressure monitor and then the reaction time was also measured pre these were the pre values before the uh, study so pre values were measured after which you know they were made to do any one of the practice which was randomized 
Okay. Uh, they had to come six different days uh -huh. uh, and record one one parameter each day, one one technique each day. Uh -huh. So six different days, six different techniques each day, pre and post recording after that particular technique uh -huh. of the heart rate, the blood pressure and the reaction time. So that was how this whole thing was measured. And everything, whether the patient, the subject who comes in, the participant of the study was randomized, like they come in their own order. But the timing when it was measured was between 10 a.m. and 12 noon. That was kept standard in the same place, uh, the same way how it is recorded so that mm -hmm. we can standardize a few things and there is no, uh, you know, pressure changes or, or anything else. That mm -hmm. could be a confounding factor. Got it. So and how long this that's how it was, was done, the methodology. How long the practice was advised to them? Uh, they like... are all practitioners. So they, they used to practice, you know, like they are regular uh, visitors here. Uh, they regularly attend the yoga sessions at uh, our school for yoga therapy. Earlier, it used to be called the center. The center mm -hmm. for yoga therapy education and research site. So they are all regular practitioners at CITER who they come for general practice. So, uh, you know, like they come twice a week, thrice a week. So they, they would have come mostly one month at least. So if they had attended 10 sessions earlier and they know the techniques well, that is when we uh, take them, inclusion criteria. So mm -hmm. if they are familiar with the techniques and if they have already done at least 10 sessions of these practices, we would take them into the study. Got it. Understood. And when they were given the pranayama practices, how many rounds they were advised or how long, uh, what is the duration of the practice they were doing each of each practice when they were, uh, yeah, when you're taking the pre and post data, uh, how, yeah. after how many rounds? So when they sit for five minutes, we take the pre data of this and then we make them do nine rounds of each technique, whatever okay. was recorded for that particular day. Uh, nine okay. round meaning one in and one out. One inhalation, one exhalation. That means one round of that particular practice. And after nine rounds, uh, we take the post recording, the, the after recording of the same parameters. And mm -hmm. it is given like, say, for example, the instructor will give the count uh, mm -hmm. for so that everybody it is standard. It is not mm -hmm. they breathe in their own, uh, you know, breath rate. It is standardized to say five breaths or six breaths per minute. So the counting given is according, adjusted accordingly. That is the usual tempo with which we do the classes at CITER. So Understood. that is, uh, say for example, breathe in, two, three, four, five, six, out, two, three, four, five, six so that would be the kind of tempo roughly coming up to five breaths a minute or six breaths a minute understand and uh, just for under it's curious to know that they have done nine rounds like why did you pick nine because it's like an odd number right it's not like uh it's like not like a 10 or 20 or something like that so why only nine rounds were uh, picked see in our tradition swamiji very specifically says that nine has a very good vibration, vibrational effect. It leaves good benefits. And, uh, you know, the mind, especially for the mind and emotions, the nine rounds seem to be very supportive. And that's why we have that nine, the number nine is very auspicious also. So mm -hmm. the nine is a minimal number of rounds for which, you know, for the benefits to set in. It's not that you have to do only nine rounds. You could do more also. So multiples of nine, if you do. We also prefer, you know, like recommend 27 rounds for a few conditions. So 27 rounds of a particular practice, morning, uh, afternoon, evening, something like that, four times a day. So which makes 108 rounds for one particular day, which is again a, a very good, uh, you know, number which leaves a good effect on you and the benefit that is happening is multifold. Understand, understand. So and I think it's, I think now uh, we have got a clear idea on uh, the study itself. Uh, now if you can explain the result of the study, right? 
so what what was the output of that like what did you uh, you measure you said reaction time uh, respire i mean the heartbeat the, so beat, the beat, basic beat. things yeah so the basic uh, the the uh, measurements that we did were the cardiovascular measurements uh, mm -hmm. you know the the systolic blood pressure the diastolic okay. blood pressure and the heart rate and mm -hmm. the reaction time of course and okay. the remaining things are derived cardiovascular indices these are measured directly using the uh, bp apparatus and the remaining you know like for example the pulse pressure the mean arterial pressure all these are derived cardiovascular indices which are uh, derived using a formula with exactly. these you know the, the systolic pressure heart rate all these with these measurements we apply the formula and arrive at the results so oh. these are the derived indices got it so now what was that uh, like did you see the difference between the surya nadi and chandra nadi and the variations between these two practices was it indicative yes. enough okay yes. please so what was hypothesized initially was that as we know from swara yoga uh, it is like the surya nadi like you said it is activatory mm -hmm. you know the energy of the sun it is energizing it is activating and the um, chandra nadi is more you know uh, the energy of the moon the lunar that is like more relaxatory more calming down and the right nostril is always associated with the sympathetic drive and the left nostril is associated with the parasympathetic so that was the hypothesis with which this was started we assumed that anything with the right is going to uh, increase the bp and the heart rate and anything with the left is going to bring down the bp and the heart rate and it is opposite as far as the reaction time goes because you get excited it is more activated which means your brain is more alert so the reaction time reading will come down mm. and with chandra nadi if the bp and heart rate are coming down the reaction time will be elongated mm -hmm. so if you can understand that got it i understand and, uh, i understand the results we got from this study were in line with what was traditionally given to us say for example the chandra nadi pranayama and the chandra vedana and in fact the nadi shuddhi which started with the left nostril all these where the heart rate and the bp came down the systolic the diastolic came down uh, it decreased and mm -hmm. in the other opposite side the surya nadi anything with the right nostril initiation mm -hmm. uh, where the blood pressure the heart rate everything went up increased mm -hmm. so there was a significant difference that was found between these two as far as the alternate nostrils went mm -hmm. what was the initiating nostril was what the effect was found so if we start breathing with the right nostril so the right nostril like what the, the surya that uh -huh. effect was found if it is the chandra if it is started with the left nostril left in right out what was the effect of the chandra nadi was found so wow. that was how it was the initiating nostril where the inhalation is done was what the effect was all about it's quite if, interesting if I, because in nadi is shuddhi that clear? it is very clear it is very clear now the uh, what i usually in the traditions right most of the yoga tradition when they do nadi shuddhi prana, pranayama they always start with the left nostril and now i think uh, from whatever you are saying uh, it is so much uh, logical now uh, why it is they, why they always start with left nostril but if we start the nadi shuddhi pranayama with the right nostril does anything change the whole effect itself changes of the practice itself the nadi shuddhi pranayama as far as again i am sticking to our tradition the gita nanda tradition where nadi shuddhi the, the the whole purpose of that is to cleanse the nadis the yes. astral channels which is why you know the left in right out right in left out is nadi shuddhi in our tradition so i am not sure again the initiating nostril also matters Uh, which we found out you know like experimentally also from this study 
uh, the write in will be more, it, it's a different benefit, right? Both are balancing because we are using both the uh, nostrils. It is both are balancing in uh, the, the total effect. I'm saying the, the uh, you know, the, the total uh, integrated effect is going to be a balancing effect. Mm -hmm. But what is the initiating nostril? It here with Nadi Shruti, we start with the left. Definitely, I don't think it is going to be the same when we start with the right. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So Very that's interesting. that's going to be another different uh, effect or benefit or what we, uh, you know, uh, record. The, the recordings are going to be definitely uh, different. Got it. And one more common question that I always hear from people, right? Between uh, Chandra Nadi and Chandra Bedana, where you... Uh, kind of inhale left, exhale left versus inhale left, exhale right, opposite. Is there a difference like similarly with Surya Nadi and Surya Vedana? Like inhaling, uh, between that yeah, there is a difference I, or it's same? Yeah. The benefit is kind of the same. Uh -huh. It's just that in traditional literature, it has been given uh, slightly, you know, Surya Vedana, Chandra Vedana have been included as part of the Ashta Kumbhaka. The Surya Nadi, Chandra Nadi is not there. So traditionally speaking, they have different benefits. But as far as the study here goes, the Chandra Nadi Pranayama and Chandra Vedana Pranayama have given the same results. And same goes with the Surya Nadi Pranayama and the Surya Vedana Pranayama. What we found was that the initiating nostril matters and not the exhalation. So the inhalation matters and not the exhalation. Understand. Very nice. Very nice. And uh, so it is so amazing to know that just a uh, nine rounds of the pranayama practice can bring so much of changes in our in our physiology, because particularly yeah. a lot of people who have this uh, BP issues and high BP, low BP issues and all, right? Uh, they just have to practice some simple pranayamas to keep it in control. It is like, uh, and that too, just for a few rounds. It is like, it is easily doable for uh, for most of them is what I feel. So Very, very, uh, very easy. Yeah, very true, very true. So, and people yeah, keep giving this excuse, no time, no time. Very true, yeah. It, just but nine rounds is what they need. going <laughs> to take, you know, 10 minutes. And I, I keep telling people, don't you over to yourself this 10 minutes is going to bring in such a magnified uh, effect, right? So yeah, many really beautiful cool. practices are there according to the need of each individual. If they can devote this 10 minutes, how much of problems they can prevent, right? Very true, very true. And uh, that's a nice way of validating the, the, the ancient science with the modern wisdom that we have right now. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Meena Ramanathan, for sharing this with us. It was a it was a great benefit because we always keep talking about it, but it's really good to know that how it has been validated. And uh, now that we have a proof to tell people that this is exactly what happens to your system, your physiology, right? Which is uh, so easy to convince the, the modern mindset, at least, to practice these pranayamas. So thank you so much, Madam, for sharing this uh, knowledge with all of thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and uh, those who are listening, so now you know the proof. Now you know what exactly is happening uh, with these two uh, uninostral practice and the alternate nostril practice. Uh, please do practice regularly. So that's the whole intention of uh, uh, sharing this knowledge and wisdom with all of you. So make yoga part of your daily lifestyle. Thank you so much. Just to, sorry, yeah. just to sum up, the right nostril is sympathetic activation sympathomimetic as we say left nostril is parasympathetic activation so a balance of the sympathetic and the parasympathetic is ideal which is kind of the autonomic balance that we are looking forward to with all these practices and uh, that is what is aimed at the samatvam samatvam yoga uchate normalizing creating that harmony uh, integrating the whole, uh, you know, the being. And that is what this is all about. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, I thank just you. hope that it's clear. And, thank you. you know, had a definitely. wonderful time. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Pranav. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for all those who watched the video. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. 
uh, kindly like, comment and subscribe and share with as many people as possible so that many will benefit from that. And those who are interested in looking at the entire paper, I've given that link to the paper that we discussed in the description below. And you can also check about uh, the introduction that I gave about Dr. Meena Ramanathan. So both of them is mentioned in the description. And please share and subscribe. Thank you so much.